So, um, the, the, the subject of my talk is migrating the Princeton University Press uh, site to Drupal 8. This is a good chunk of what Evolving Web has been up to uh, between May and maybe September, October, November as our, as our big project. Uh, so I hope you're in the right room. Um, about myself, I'm Alex Durgachev. I'm the co-founder of Evolving Web. Uh, I've been doing this Drupal song and dance for, for nine out of the ten years that our company has been around. Before that, we were doing WordPress and Ruby and Rails and other IT stuff before we found, found that this is a really great niche for us and our clients. Um, we've, uh, we've been also co-organizing Drupal Montreal. We've been sponsoring all these Drupal cons. Uh, and uh, yeah, I mean, I probably have a life outside of uh, evolving up in Drupal, but I forget what it is now. Uh, I'm Jigar, Jigar Mehta. Uh, I work at Evolving Web, uh, Drupal developer. I've been working with Drupal since 2013. And um, I've been working in PHP for like around nine years maybe. So uh, that's pretty much it. You can find me on LinkedIn, Twitter, and all those places with Jigarius. Or if Jigarius is not available, Jigarius Caesar. Uh, and, <laughs> and I warned Jigar that if he, if he didn't have enough interesting tidbits for his bio, I, I would jump in. Uh, so uh, Jigar uh, has been working with us uh, for about a year and a half now. He, he's from Kolkata. He, he then went moved to Colombia, decided that it was too hot in Colombia, and, and decided to move to Canada instead. Uh, so lucky us. He, I think he speaks six, six, yeah, six, six languages, uh, uh, including he's been, he's been in Montreal full-time since June, and his French is about the same level as mine now, and I've been there for 15 years. So it's, he's, he's very much loves languages. He also tells me he's, he's a rapper, and a ninja, and a monk. <laughs> You'll have to ask him at the drinks tonight how that works out. Um, so yeah, that's, that's you guys. All right, uh, so in Evolving Web, we've been doing Drupal for, for 90 years. We're doing lots of big enterprise projects. Uh, my wife, Suzanne here, who's co-founder of the company, is uh, running our training program, and she, she's very successful in that. Uh, our office is in old, old Montreal, and, and we're, we're growing, we're hiring people. We're still under 10 people, but we're, you know, like a third bigger than this time last year. And, uh, and now we're beginning to learn how to work with remotes. So all of, all of you people on YouTube who are listening to this, who are, who are, who are like into the kind of stuff we're talking about, please, uh, please apply to work for us. That's, that's how Jigar came our way. Um, in terms of our client work that we've done over the years, uh, our big projects have been for Linux Foundation, now the Princeton University Press, lots of work with McGill, where at least Suzanne, I, and our first, like, 80% of our first set of employees over the first seven years, I would say, work, uh, sorry, studied. Uh, lately, we've been working for a big project for Western Digital, we're doing Government of Canada stuff, uh, and, and related Canadian goodness. And um, so we... We really make sure that we don't just deliver code and leave you there. So we have a, a, a very strong component of training and knowledge transfer in everything that we do. Uh, you know, we, we are a small company. We often work with large organizations with existing Drupal teams. And so we'll kind of work either side by side with them. We'll, we'll set up coaching sessions, maybe pair programming. Uh, and, uh, and so we really like to enable our clients. So we're, we're not a big full service shop that, will, that is looking to get vendor lock-in. We're really trying to enable uh, enable uh, our clients to, to make the most out of, out of what we deliver. Uh, we really like to focus on an agile kind of MVP approach to development. So you'll, you'll come into us, you'll probably have very ambitious goals, maybe, maybe enough of a budget, maybe not, maybe enough specs to find, maybe not. So, so we really focus on the maximum value in the shortest amount of time uh, to, to really then iterate on. Uh, so we're, we're not just you know, PHP and JavaScript, like we really like go deeper in the stack you know, like Linux sysadmin uh, would be would be like an example. Right now, we, we, we don't have this developer anymore, but we used to have Dave, who was like a, a C guy. So I would say, hey, we can go down to C if you need to, and GDB to see what's going on in, in your code. Uh, so that's always been a part of how we do things. And we always focus on good usability, design, uh, large-scale deployments. Uh, because we're in Montreal, we do multilingual. We've done a lot of search over the years, uh, and uh, like with projects like this, we've done a lot of migration. In fact, uh, like we've made substantial contributions to Drupal 8 core migrate module, especially where it overlaps with multilingual, but in general as well. Um, so this brings us to, to the project uh, in question, the Princeton University Press. So we're very, very pleased that we won it. It, it took quite a bit of effort uh, on our side, and I think we're going up against FFW, ZifTech, uh, and other very prestigious larger shops than us but I think maybe we wanted it more. So um, we, uh, yeah, so the Princeton University Press is, uh, is, is not 
despite the name, it's, it's not part of Princeton University. It's a separate uh, publishing uh, organization that's right here on campus. In fact, their office is right next door. Uh, and uh, they're, they have a, over 100 years of track record of publishing incredibly prestigious books. They have many Nobel Prize winners who are, who are part of its authors. Uh, most of the books are uh, related to either academics in some way, like uh, somebody's thesis that be became really well known and, and was worthy of wider publication, or uh, you know, a professor writing a book for the general audience, like uh, about macroeconomics and how it applies to, to everyday life. So uh, they, it's a very prestigious organization. Um, their existing website was, was not, not so prestigious. So they came to us with, with a, a legacy website that, uh, that was initially developed in the 90s and maybe iterated on a little bit, a slight rebranding. But, uh, but this legacy site was, was basically uh, generated, like static, static website that was being generated from VB scripts. Uh, by, by a person who, who left many years ago. The, the, he wrote the code, he really knew how that worked and nobody else did. So the scripts just kept on kind of running and kind of regenerating the pages. Um, but they wanted to move it to a, a platform that they actually knew how, how to fix bugs in it, uh, that, that would be stable, secure, uh, future-proof. And uh, they already had been coming to these camps uh, and so Drupal and its alignment with the Princeton University community as a whole was, was a natural fit. Um, they also needed the, the new website to be responsive, which is great uh, because it's you know 2017, 2018 now. It's it's time. But they gave us a twist. They said, "Hey, we have a really big redesign. We're going to hire some super fancy agency, uh, and right now we just want to focus on the technology side. We want to do a lift and shift." So they said, "We want to do a uh, responsive look and feel." While at the same time, we don't, want to we don't want to change our existing look and feel. That's coming next year, or maybe the year after that even. That's a really big project with lots of committees. So uh, that was quite a bit of a challenge. We said, how, how do we do that? Um, so I'll circle back. So how? So we started auditing the site and seeing what's in there. And, uh, and so it's about 9,000 published works, so maybe a little bit more if you include some out of print. Uh, there's, there's lots of Einstein paper pages. Uh, that were just published to the site. There's lots of ancillary metadata about the about each work, each published work. So it's a, it's a basically a big catalog with a lot of extras. So quotes, sample chapters, table of contents, uh, sometimes PDFs, sometimes HTML. Uh, there's a tremendous amount of uh, bird-related content. So apparently, you know, birders, the guys with binoculars who who who, who love to take pictures of birds. They they uh, this this is one of the leading publishers for that for that field. So there's a lot of bird related websites embedded in the main site. There's lots of PDFs, some blog posts in WordPress, and, uh, and, and you know, over 10,000 random content pages that accumulated over you know, almost 20 years or maybe even more that have just sort of been migrated over as part of static HTML. Uh, so the moving parts, there weren't actually that many. There were some many sites that are embedded. There's a WordPress blog that we, we chose, to leave, chose to leave in place for the time being. There's a PHP newsletter that, uh, that really is going to have to get moved to MailChimp or something. Uh, they had a custom search written in CGI. I don't remember if it was Perl or C. Uh, and then they had a Google Books embedded search as well. They had shopping carts so you can buy directly off the site, but it was not an e-commerce site. It was linking each by ISBN to an external uh, publisher like or, or distributor, in fact, like Wiley was doing the Europe and I don't remember who was doing the USA. So they had two separate shopping cards. You can see that in, in the screenshot here. Uh, they, uh, they have an Onyx feed. If you, if you guys are familiar with the publishing industry, an Onyx is an XML format that, uh, that Amazon will parse in order to get all the metadata for a book and all the other publishers. And so they were like distributing that with FTP for all, all of these records. And they have lots of random embedded video and audio and probably lots of other things that I didn't have bullets for. Um, so what did we have to do for this project? We, we did a big analysis of, of their database that was powering the book metadata. It wasn't the source database, it was an extract of a larger ERP with other data somewhere in a, in a data warehouse. But, uh, but this is where the original VB scripts were running against, it was a SQL Server database with an Access UI. Uh, these VB scripts were actually VBA scripts embedded inside of Access. Um, and they generated a static website. We did a big content audit because we realized that there's no way 10,000 plus static pages are relevant anymore. I mean, just because they accumulated over 20 years. Um, then we built a, a, a rather 
sleek, minimal site. Uh, we thought it would be very straightforward because we're in Drupal. We thought it'd be very straightforward because we were just, it's a static website, right? So how hard could it be to build a Drupal website that, that models a static website? Uh, and then we added uh, responsive design. And then the other, the other big challenge, uh, we kind of knew it would be a, a challenge from the start, but not as big as it was, was the nightly sync. So they wanted to make sure that whenever the data got uploaded, uh, updated anywhere, it would magically be synced to the website. A very reasonable requirement. Um, we, we, liked, we liked the setup because uh, the, our work was cut out for us. I mean, the client, the client said, here's the problem, guys. Here's the before. You know what the after should look like. Go ahead. And of course, deployment. So first, first thing, uh, we, we dove in quite fast. We had uh, just a few months to do it, and we started with scoping. So it was rather complex migration. We had about 30 tables in, in the SQL Server database, uh, which we affectionately called Anne's Biblio, because there's other, it's called the Biblio database, but there's a new product that they're moving to called Virtue Sales Biblio for their ERP, which is confusing, so that's Anne's Biblio. So there's 30 tables, uh, the biggest one, it works and editions and they have like you know 30 40 fields most of which end up being paragraphs in Drupal 8 uh, so we went through nobody really knew exactly what all the fields did there was just the, the VB script and there was the existing website that was generated and there was the, the database dumps so uh, we, we did our best to figure out what every field was, was and so we just annotated and made a big list of everything that wasn't used narrowed it down to just the you know the 30 tables that we needed and the and uh, anywhere between three and 30 fields that, that, uh, that were being used and, and figure out how they were used. We had to analyze those legacy DB scripts. There was 30 to 50 scripts. Uh, you could say per content type if you want, but it's, it's kind of arbitrary. It was just a script that was written by somebody at a certain time when a stakeholder asked them. Um, there was multiple versions of, of each script when they needed to tweak something. They weren't using version control, that this is written in the 90s. So they were just like discount, like version of every script. There was commented out code all over the place. And, and sometimes they'd have to comment in the code in order to run it successfully. And then comment it back out again to run it for something else. So it was quite, quite hard to unrank, uh, untangle and we we're very lucky that we had the client's team's help to, to answer all our questions. Without that, there's no amount of work we could have done to, to figure it out. Um, these scripts took days to run for these books. So that was a big challenge. There was um, a lot of special books that were tagged as special and that had to be hand edited so the generated HTML would be handed in during the year after uh, because they didn't know how to fix a bug, for example, because the script was too complex. Uh, and uh, yeah, so then there was the generated HTML files were manually moved to a web-mounted drive W and that would appear on the website. Um, and each script was like, I don't know, there's at least tens, 10, 20,000 lines of code in, in those scripts without duplication. Um, so we did this audit of the script with the help of the team uh, of each script. We we took the, the current, the existing workflow, which was the source database generating uh, dynamic HTML pages and then work pages. So they're separate, like for, for the reviews, that's the that's like a dynamic HTML pages, and then for each book page, that's the biggest one. Lots of static files on the side, the PDFs, illustration, and cover images. And, uh, and, and then, like I said, many, many thousands of static HTML pages that are just somehow linked to somewhere. This is the thing. And the, the, the new workflow was going to be. Uh, we took the SQL Server database, we wrote a set of SQL statements in MSSQL and we wrote a PowerShell script that ran them all and generated a bunch of clean CSV files that generated, you know, that contained only the data that the website needed. So we needed to decouple website data from everything else that was in this legacy database. So we generated these 30 tables, 30 CSV files, uh, stored them on an FTP or an SFTP server and then uh, on a nightly basis we would have like a cron job that would go in, download them all, seeing which files changed, then see which records changed, because we needed to be efficient, and then import everything using the Drupal 8 Migrate API. Um, so this was kind of a big deal, uh, and took us most of the time. <laughs> um, let's see, there's also all the static assets files, like images, PDFs, and HTML files. And so the images, we actually wrote a nightly migration that'll go for the images and harvest all of those. On the other hand, the, uh, all, the, all the PDFs, we decided not to move into Drupal. We would let the, the client's content team associate them as they went. So we set up a standalone FTP server that we just took everything that existed wholesale, not to break links. So that's all there. All the broken links won't fail until somebody notices that they're there and can go and move them into Drupal one bit at a time. We, we, we think that was a great sort of compromise because we had a very tight timeline for, for a very large migration. 
Um, so the Drupal data structure contains, it's, it's actually quite simple, I swear. Uh, so the major content type is work. Uh, there's a basic page content type, which you see is nice and simple. Uh, <laughs> so then there's a contributor co content type that's uh, multi-value that's tied to work. And then there's a lot of paragraph content types and taxonomy content types that are basically all those ancillary pages that are linked to works. Whether they're fields or whether they're se separate tables altogether, we, we usually model them as paragraphs or, or fields, of course. Um, so we didn't have too many entity types and, uh, and it worked out all right. I mean, like I said, a couple of dozen fields at least. Uh, the content cleanup, we, we were overly ambitious. We tried to do it internally ourselves. In the end, we sort of swift, switched more to let's pull in just the couple of hundred pages that we know are linked from the main menu and very prominent and QA those. And then the rest, we sort of move wholesale and let the client figure out if they want to keep them or not. So we, we took this, at first we were over ambitious and we scaled back. Uh, and, and like I said, there was actually 76,000 uh, 76, static HTML pages that, that accumulated. Most of them were generated pages that were like sort of duplicate, like when they reran those VB scripts, they, they would make a backup in a, in a folder and would kind of leave it around with a different file name or a different folder. So that calmed us down a little bit, but you know, there were still several thousand static pages to keep and 53,000 in general pages we needed to delete one way or the other. Um, we had a giant CSV file, uh, in fact, sorry, giant Google Doc spreadsheet where we had all the folders that we categorized whether or not to keep, where they were linked. Uh, we even have like a nice link that, uh, that goes to an FTP drive that you can preview what's in that folder. So it, it made the audit much more sane. Uh, and so that was the audit. We knew, we knew the challenge at that point. Uh, we knew that uh, once, once, once you were a couple of weeks in, we saw all this data that you just saw. We realized that we have to reprioritize. We gotta just get the data into Drupal. We gotta clean it up as much as possible. And we're gonna kind of stop there. We can't do any of the crazy features. That's gotta be 2018. So, so that's, that's what we have to prioritize as we do that. But of course we still had the requirements. So the new site still had to have the modern responsive design because you know, the people who approved the funding still said, that's how we can justify uh, spending money. Uh, we still needed to, to keep something modern, uh, more for uh, evolving web than, than, than the client, because uh, uh, like if, if it takes work and time to recreate a specific look and feel, like it's actually easier to create a bootstrap-based layout that's already responsive rather than uh, the exact legacy layout that they used to have. Um, so it, it actually saved us time to, to go with a clean design, but we stuck, stuck to as much of the branding, the layout as much as possible, making only minimal changes that the creative director would not object and would not feel would sabotage their big redesign that's coming in 2018. Uh, so we, 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 tough. We, we sort of took a risk going further than they asked, but we tried to walk a fine line to make everybody happy. Um, and I think, I think uh, in the end, when uh, the new director came on board uh, in the fall and she reviewed the new website that they were about to launch, I'm pretty sure what she was mostly focused on wasn't all the migration, she didn't care. What she was probably focused on is, does the site look better and more modern? So ironically enough, that, that was a gamble that seemed to have paid off. Um, so of course, SEO was, was a concern. Pages from 99 didn't have any good HTML structure. We needed to be on Drupal, we needed to be well built, we needed to be maintainable. Uh, we needed to make sure that the content team can use WYSIWYG and can log in and make all the changes and clean up. Uh, we needed to make sure that they don't have to use their uh, Luis here in the back. Uh, didn't need to run her Photoshop scripts to resize images as they came in, but instead just let Drupal handle it. Uh, and uh, and we needed to uh, at least improve the navigation a little bit and set up the sync. So the the new the new navigation is a little bit different uh, from from the site. Like I mentioned, it, it tries to stick to as much of the colors and the overall header and footer and the placement of all the materials. If we, we didn't go and revisit, hey, what should be on your homepage? What are visitors looking for? Because that was out of our mandate. Uh, however, we, we did make it responsive. We did make it more modern. As, as you can see, it, it looks a little generic, but, but you know, definitely respectable. Uh, and uh, we, we changed from the side menu to a drop-down horizontal menu. So the side menu in the old side used to be like this. It was kind of arbitrary what these links were. Again, somebody just wanted a link on the homepage and so it would just get added and that was 10 years ago and it's still there. So now we reorganized the menu a little bit and we made, the, made it into a drop-down menu at the top. I think, uh, I think it made a big usability win without confusing anybody. And of course, we have a standard header and footer as you'd expect on a new site. 
Uh, there you go. So I mentioned that this was supposed to be a simple, static HTML website. How hard could it be to port? Well, it turns out with all those fields you saw in those spreadsheets, the template and the logic around that template that we had to put in the migration and the pre-process hooks were, was, was, a, was a monster. I mean, like th those VB scripts were tens of thousands of lines of code for a reason because they had so many fields, they had so many exceptions, they had so many rules about how authors should be ordered. What is an author versus an editor versus an illustrator versus a contributing editor? I mean, like they, they, they had so many organizational specific knowledge and maybe, maybe specific to the publishing industry that we were learning as we went. So we simplified a bit and we poured it over uh, quite a bit also to what they had. And, uh, and I think we capture 80% of what was there. Um, so we managed to like, have uh, a, a, little bit, a little bit of collapsibility. So you see the little pluses here. Um, and truncated the description, Amazon style. So you, you read the first paragraph and see more. And, and basically, uh, we, we, moved, we moved things around so that this, this page looks a little bit more standard. Like when you see a book description page of another publisher on Amazon, it, it, it's more familiar. Um, we still integrate with Google Book Search, with the shopping carts, we rendered the videos in a nice way. Um, so so the, the, this page is now the same. Uh, and then of course, like I said, there's 10,000 of those pages, so it's quite important. Uh, migrating the book data, so we said there's between eight and 10,000 books, lots of cover images. I think there was actually more, this number is incorrect. Uh, the, we realized that performance would be a concern. So we, we, like I mentioned, we kind of architected from the start to have uh, incremental imports uh, and you know computing hashes of every record in the source and com comparing it with a with a hash that we're storing in Drupal and seeing what changed. Uh, we, we looked for files and we looked for modify time and, and all that. So we tried to make it as, as performant as possible. We allowed for manual migrations using Drush or or in sync cron uh, and and removed books that were removed from the source. So which was not standard Drupal migrate. Uh, so I'm excited to say that the only, the only custom module that we did, at least when I wrote these slides at first, was PUP migrate. So all of the complexities in the migrate code and all of it is just mappings and, and the custom code required to join those mappings. Um, and uh, we handled source deletions. We had an approach where we had multiple CSVs because we, we had this simplified approach where we ex exported to CSV, but we still needed to, to do joins on the CSV for multi-value paragraph data. So we kind of simulated SQL join style logic from multiple CSVs in, in our migrate code. Uh, we supported both FTP and SFTP because all of this was coming remotely. Uh, again, that was not out of the box Drupal, so we had to support that. Uh, we tested it running it in Lightly Cron, and we had to resolve a lot of issues in coding and just incorrect data, inconsistent stuff that over the years was either patched or was always broken and then we sort of found it as we went. Uh, we did use a few contrib modules, but there are quite few, uh, mostly standard site building classics. Um, I think I think one in, in, in future phases as the site grows, this this list should grow uh, because we really kept it to the minimum. Like you know, this is just like the core. Uh, I once I once went uh, to a performance talk uh, by Khalid uh, out of Waterloo, uh, owner of Two Bits, and 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 he was saying, "How do I make my Drupal site fast?" He does lots of audits, and he was saying, "Well." I do an audit and I see that they have 100 contrib modules and, and, so, and, and 30 content types. And so the answer, he says, is very simple. Don't build Drupal websites that have 100 contrib modules and 30 content types. So I took that to heart. That was 10 years ago. And, and so this is, this is a site with a lot fewer of that. I, I feel happy that we were able to stay disciplined for, for, for now. We'll see, we'll see how it goes in the future. Maybe in the next year, there'll be 100 contrib modules. Um, so there's lots of fields. Uh, we did lots of cleanup. Uh, we had to do a lot of link rewriting because we moved the PDFs in place and some of it got to Drupal. Uh, we had to denormalize the structure to make the ebook tables and the print tables more consistent. So we merged them into it because all the fields were almost the same, but they were separate CSVs. Uh, there was a the support for a content type called book apps. So some books have an app to go with it. Um, the static migration. We, we, in the end, we realized this is too big a job. Let's just focus on 100 or some, 100 something of the most important pages, bring them in, and keep the rest around and let, let those just be linked to and, uh, and either removed or included manually by the content team. Um, so we initially did write a migration to bring them into Drupal, 
but that was a one-time migration to just sort of facilitate copying and pasting and then you'd clean it up. Um, we sometimes we identified certain pages which were static, which should have been just views. So either we did that or we flagged it as this page needs to be simplified. So it could be just a view rather than a hand edited beast. So then we went live. We had a lovely deployment checklist. We, uh, we decided Pantheon was, was a good model because we wanted the client to be self-sufficient. We wanted it to be quite economical. Their budget isn't huge. Uh, and uh, we basically wanted to allow them to know what their hosting platform is so it's not sort of encumbered by Evolving Web's sysadmin practices. Um, so I think, I think that's a huge, huge uh, win uh, from a client perspective. Uh, we, we set up the legacy domain to assets that pressed up inside the DU that had all the old PDF files and all the old HTML files that we didn't migrate in. Uh, we tested our migrations with cron that came out some problems which we fixed. Uh, we, yeah, we set up some analytics, disabled some development <coughs> modules, domains, uh, changed some redirect settings. We did a performance audit using our favorite performance profiling tool called Blackfire and did some front end performance checks as well. We enabled caching, CSS aggregation, uh, set up broken link checks, um, and did a soft launch at first. We also followed some extra steps on the Pantheon launch checklist here. It's very nice. I think Octane might have another even more comprehensive one. We set up backups, monitoring, and did some training for the team. Uh, in the end, I think, Luis, you can correct me, was it, was it 10 or five, five hours of training? It wasn't too much. Excuse me? How many hours of training in the end was it that um, Suzanne did you guys? Uh, yeah, about 10 hours training. And I think it was quite packed. It was a, we did it a couple hours, two or three hours at a time. So it was just a, a few hands-on session and, and, and that worked out very well. I was very happy to see how quickly uh, their, their team that had never done Drupal before was able to get up to speed and, and do their job well. So if there was audio, they would say, that was easy, right? Plus we were already developing a Pantheon, so deploying was just a matter of mapping some DNS and we were live and we were done and everything's happy. And so that we could focus on future work. So set up the support agreement, improve the URL structure from the legacy thing while keeping redirects, uh, setting up the advanced search that we've been talking about, but just scoped, uh, getting better web forms, more training, more admin UI improvements, SEO stuff, setting up facility for discounting uh, on an annual basis if you want to buy these books, buy them on Christmas, um, and so on. And then talk about the rebranding and the migration to virtual sales biblio. So the future was clear, not so fast. Uh, can anyone guess what the problem we ran into? Uh, so I, I couldn't have guessed either. I, in fact, I, I did guess. It was, uh, it was that the nightly sync was a beast. When you're migrating so much stuff and it took tens of hours to run and we thought, hey, it's going to be incremental, right? So nothing's going to change. It'll be fine. And yet, you know, we, with Pantheon, by going the Pantheon route, we had three minutes of cron time before Pantheon would cron time out its cron. And so if anything broke our hashes, which in migrate, you know, one configuration change will we'll get everything through a compute. You'll have another 20 hour migration job to run. At night, that'll spill out during the day. Uh, the books won't, won't, won't sync properly. Uh, so we had a series of unfortunate events uh, around the sync process, uh, which, which we tested reasonably well, but once we had that three minute window, and once we had the attention of all the you know, the, the, like the tens of thousands of people who, who go to the site every month. I mean, I think it's even maybe even more. Like, there was lots of challenges around that for the next few months. And so Jigar will explain this part. Okay, so uh, it was a normal day when in came an email from Basecamp saying like, there's this, this, this happening on the site. So luckily we had, uh, we knew that this, this was quite a like huge moving part in the site. So we had built in some logging and monitoring information. Like um, for every migration every night, uh, the thing that was happening was uh, we were tracking if the CSV files had changed. And uh, then if the CSV file has some change, then we had a mechanism to say, OK, so this particular CSV file has changed. And we need to re run the relevant migration. So uh, and uh, when the migration would run, it would leave log messages like this saying, this migration ran successfully, this file had not changed, so it didn't run, etc. So uh, uh, that came, like, that helped a lot. And we could track the problems uh, faster than we would have been able to without these. And uh, then there was some other problem where some migrations would run all of a sudden, and we would be, like, confused, like, why did they run? The CSV file hasn't changed at all. So uh, 
then Alex came up with this idea of like writing a script so that we could uh, do like a git repo of the CSV files and every every hour or every night we would just add all the files and commit them and push them to a git repo and that way we would get a good UI and for tracking the things that have changed. So that was also helpful and then we found out that the hash tracking thing that we had done for finding out whether the CSV file had changed had a problem and then we could fix it. So then we found some newer corner cases like uh, image files were not being overwritten and things like that. So what happens in Drupal is like uh, you have, uh, if somebody doesn't know, uh, that uh, when you migrate an image and when you have an image in the Drupal system, it puts it in a particular place and then you can like have, uh, have a backend UI of resizing those images and showing smaller versions on some pages and bigger versions on some pages. So during migrations, uh, we like say for example a file changes, we pull the file, we put it where the original file was, overwrite it, uh, but Drupal wouldn't understand that the file, original file has changed, so I have to regenerate those other images as well, like the thumbnail or maybe the giant size image. So we had to do some things to fix that as well. Uh, so there were these small problems and then we realized that, uh, like Alex mentioned, the time window that we had, and we had expected everything to run fine, but then we realized that uh, the migrations were taking way longer than they used to take. And uh, I was also, also confused, like uh, when we were in the dev stage, things used to be faster, but after going live, suddenly things became slower. So maybe we added some code in there, which was not working as expected. So uh, then one day, we, like uh, Alex suggested that let's, let's do Blackfire on this. And let's see, like, spend some more time and unearth some things. So uh, we figured out that, uh, yeah, so Blackfire, I'll just give a quick intro of Blackfire. It's like a tool which lets you see what's going on behind the scenes when you run some PHP code. So it will show you, like, okay, so the PHP code starts running here, then it calls this function, then this does this, and you can see, like, memory consumption and time consumption at all stages and you can <coughs> spot, okay, so this one is taking more time than expected, so why is this taking so much time? And then you can take a closer look at that place. So uh, since, uh, so which one is this one? Yes, yeah, so the, when migration starts, the relevant CSV file is downloaded because we wrote a custom plugin to do that. And uh, it turned out that uh, our custom plugin didn't run well with like, play well with uh, some other plugin that comes with a module called Migrate Plus. So every time you use those two plugins together, uh, for each and every row that you go through, the CSV file gets downloaded once. So it's like a 10 to 15 MB of files getting downloaded per row. And uh, we had like 8,000, 9,000 records, so 9,000 downloads. So like, uh, if anybody has seen that meme of Dragon Ball, like. It's over 9,000, it's, it's something like that. So then we immediately fixed that, and uh, it was an 80% improvement, so we were happy. Jigar, I think we should, we should drink every time we have an over 80% improvement. I finished already. Oh, well, let's fix that, let's fix that. Okay. All right. I thought you were kidding, holy crap. No, 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 and this is private import from Ontario. Okay. Over 9,000. So, over 9,000. And uh, then we had like a, Okay, so then we had a third-party library in there somewhere which was downloading those CSV files and uh, it turned out, oh, so we were downloading the cover images. So that library had like some weird mechanism. So you have a folder on the FTP server where there are 9,000 files. You want to download one file, so what the library would do is it will get the list, entire list of all the files that exist in the uh, like FTP folder it will iterate over all the files that it has found. It will create some PHP objects for each of them. Then it will create relevant like permission objects, owner objects, and it will do it for all the files that it has found in the folder. And after that, it would like just see, okay, so which is the file that they are asked for? Then it will compare the names for all of them, and then it will return the file which matches and discard everything else. So this was really like uh, taking a long time, and it was creating around 35,000 PHP objects or something in the background. 
So uh, then Blackfire like helped us find this problem and we like bypassed certain like functionality of the FTP library. I think it's called Toki FTP or something. And then we ran a lower level function in there to download the files ourselves instead of letting the library do it. So then we saved around 50% of time there. Do we drink for that as well? 50%? Okay, I'll drink after my part. <laughs> I'm almost okay. done, so I'm good. So, uh, okay, so the node load code. Okay, so there, there was like while generating, like while we were importing books, there was one requirement where we were supposed to have uh, a strange string of authors, like not very strange, but it was strange to me at least. So we, we were supposed to have, say the book has six authors, so we were supposed to show a string like uh, author one, comma, author two, comma, author three, uh, and author four as well, and then et all or something like that. So the, and the author names were in a special kind of a format, like last name, middle name, then the f entire full name, initials, and things like that. So like you can see the format there. So uh, for that, what we had to do is uh, load the relevant, like when we were migrating the books, we had to get, fetch all the names of the authors, and then put this string together and then save it. So uh, this code didn't look harmful at all, but it turned out like with Blackfire, we found out that it was in the wrong place. We were not supposed to do it like the way we did it is good because it makes Drupal realize that something has changed if the author name changes. But uh, then it turned out like putting it there would make uh, a simple operation like seeing the migration status, which shows you how many records have been imported, how many are pending, and things like that. Even that screen was becoming really slow. So uh, then we moved the code to some other place, and as a result, we gained like 70% improvement there as well. So you can like count like 50%, 80%, 70%, so how, uh, like we hadn't ever expected that there would be things going on like this. And, uh, Okay, I think I missed one slide here. Okay, so I'll go with this one. Uh, MSSQL randomness. Okay, so like I mentioned once, that we were keeping file hashes to see if a certain file has changed. So uh, in MSSQL, there's this behavior when you don't specify a very clear ordering clause, like how do I want my rows? First order them by book ID, then order them by this. So if MSSQL finds some ambiguity or some room for like uh, comfort somewhere, it would say, okay, so they don't want it in a specific order, I'll just make things ran random. So uh, that was triggering like the migrations to run even though there were no changes and we were like uh, going crazy over this, figuring out why is this happening and why are they changing 900 records every night. So then we... You have no idea what horrible yeah. things we said about you guys, saying, why did they change the whole table without telling us? So we thought like, well, there are 900 record changes and why are they doing it every night? So <laughs> I don't think they're doing it. Then Alex said, okay, let's take this, the, take a closer look at the CSV thing that we made like for tracking the, the GitHub CSV, page diff, yeah. the, the GitHub page. So we went there and then we figured out, okay, so the records disappear here, they appear at the top. The next day they disappear from the top, they appear from at the bottom. So then we figured out, okay, so this, this is what is going on. And uh, actually I had faced this problem back in the days, like five to six years ago. And then I recalled, okay, so it's something similar to what had happened then. And then we included like stricter ordering mechanism called order by clauses and things became better. So uh, yeah, so I'll let you jump in. Yeah, so I think it's fair to say with, with those improvements, we, we saw, depending on the scenario, 90 to 99% improvement in the time that it took to run Josh migrate status and the time that it took to run a migration that had no changes, you know, just the same CSVs because of the, that CSV. So it's, uh, it was a huge win. Uh, so I think I would encourage anyone who has large data sets to invest a lot of time before launch or after launch, so if you're ambitious, uh, to, to spend a lot of time profiling to make sure you have the fastest speed. And the other thing that we learned is that we wasted a lot of time in QA waiting for the sync to finish to say, well, this bug will be fixed when the sync is finished. Well, we would have waited a lot less time if uh, the things were 99% faster. So, highly recommended.
Um, and so now, after we have got, got through this process, we, we did, do in fact have very stable syncs. Uh, the client is in fact only adding a few books here and there. They're very reasonable. The code runs in a very reasonable time. Pantheon is happy. Everyone's very happy. So that was great. On the project management side, so we had a, a nice team. Uh, Matt was our technical PM before he left us to go work for as lead the web developer for McGill. Jigar is still here, fortunately. Or he also left uh, uh, to start his own business. Um, Matt is a, is a freelance designer who did the design. A back-end developer, Dave Azlevsky, is, is a super mega guru. He also left uh, to go to Stripe as a, as, a, as a sort of backup genius guy, uh, but he's, he's doing very well. We have an intern, and, uh, Alex, who did a lot of QA with us, and uh, Suzanne and I uh, helped steer this project in the right direction. We had a great collaboration with, uh, with the Princeton uh, University Press team. Without them, we couldn't have gotten a fraction of, of uh, what we got done. done. Uh, so we, we did a portion on site, we did a lot of demos either in person or with the Zoom conferencing. Uh, we, we had a really good point of contact. It was Anne who was making all the decisions and it was often Louise who was following up on the, on the content audit and detailed stuff. So it was very clear, very nice. Uh, they were very focused for our clients. So we had a, we have a, at the office we have a list, like a, a cartoon that Tavo created for what kind of horrible client are you and all the things that they change their mind and, and have crazy ideas about scope. Here the task was very clear and the client was very disciplined about, hey, we just want the existing website, move to Drupal, that's all we're asking for, which, which made it possible to actually focus on that. We used Basecamp as a, as a collaboration and we had lots of to-dos for each other that were checked off instead of sending emails willy-nilly. Uh, the timeline was started pretty much in May and uh, got to pre-launch in August, launched in early September or mid-September, and then uh, the, all this performance stuff in September, October, November, and December, and January. We were checking every day. It's been quite stable, quite calm, very happy. Uh, I'll skip this slide. So the challenge is, yeah, we, we have, uh, we, we, we had many tens of thousands of books, well, 10,000 books almost, and, and many like tens of thousands of ancillary records associated with each book that we're migrating in. Uh, they're on a stable platform in Drupal 8. The, the site is maintainable. It, you can build on top of it. it. It loads fairly quickly, not as quickly as static HTML pages, but then it doesn't take two days to update. Um, and uh, yeah, so this, this is the, uh, the, you know, the, the, what we did for the site uh, as, as we learned some, some lessons along the way. And, uh, and yeah, so do you guys have any questions? So, I have yeah, a lot of questions. This is an exciting project, but uh, just starting with the, uh, the, the first one, this is the uh, book attributes or metadata for the purposes of surfacing that up uh, for a commerce use case, or was actually the, the book content? Uh, this is uh, this is book metadata for sort of the, the just Amazon style, but uh, but I wouldn't say it's commerce because this, the the prices and stuff we didn't have to manage because that's handled in a separate e-commerce system. So you weren't actually uh, were you pulling in the actual books themselves, like book content? No, just just the meta, the, the sample chapters. Got it. Uh, and the table of content. Title management kind of a thing. It was more title management, yeah. And then with respect to the, the, the image assets, we'll, we'll assets, these, I can't say the word asset, but we get a shot of that. Uh, <laughs> were they in their, their native format, like uh, in uh, Illustrator format, or they were already uh, web ready, like JPEG? Uh, uh, there were several formats, but they were kind of web ready because we inherited <laughs> the existing workflow. So we sort of like came in. So you didn't, have to, you didn't have to do any transformation uh, of, uh, of uh, assets for I'll mention, okay, earlier there was a mix of like uh, some JPG files, some PNGs, and some GIFs, and some TIFFs as well. So then later it was decided that we would go for PNGs because they give you crispy quality. So then everything was made into a PNG and... Like did, they, did they run that through a process outside? Yeah, the they, had to, they had to do that because they, they the, so we decided to descope the Onyx feed generation. So they already have an existing process to generate that Onyx feed and the dump of all the, all the files. So we just asked them to sort of standardize it and clean it up, which they did on their side very nicely. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, and, and so now our migrate scripts are relatively clean and didn't have to account for the, that. But we didn't have to, so we got rid of the TIFFs now. We're not pulling TIFFs into Drupal, which is really nice. And then a final question. Uh, although I have a lot more that I can talk with you about separately. The uh, assets like uh, PDF or any EPUB format, did you guys have to handle that and surface that up on the site at all? Or again, those were just uh, 
pointers to wherever those uh, we, were being? Because of, we only had a couple of months to, to, to do all this, we, we left them on that assets.press.princeton.edu subdomain, and, and that's going to have to get cleaned up and moved into Drupal in a, in a separate phase. <coughs> and we wrote a rewrite like 404 handler, for so like certain files were map, mapped to that particular place, like all images or all PDFs or certain XML files. We just read the URL point, redirect it there. Yeah, and there's a couple of to tools that I, I could talk to you guys about in terms of grabbing EPUB or getting PDF and it for your next step. Uh, That's great. Period. How are we for time? Oh, we still have time, but for questions, can we borrow your mic <coughs> so that we could hear the questions? And that's that's a great idea. Thank you, Mike. Okay. Thanks, Jess. <laughs> so, were you able to see into all of this before or during your proposal process, or did you have to just make your best? Yes, what could be in their system before you uh, said you know, you're interested in doing it? That, that's a great question. Um, so we pushed quite hard for a separate scoping phase uh, be, without sticking a final figure because we could see by visiting the site that there was a lot of complexity under the surface. Uh, the client said that's a good idea and then the client came back to us a few weeks later saying, yeah, but the other vendors don't seem to have a problem with giving us quotes, so please give us a number and we'll do a separate scoping phase. So in the end, we gave them the number, we did the scoping phase at the start, uh, but basically the number was set in place, and, and that, to be perfectly honest, caused a lot of tension, and because you know, I wasn't in a position to you know, say, well, look, it is kind of what I said at the start from my intuition, here's the proof, but you know, I said, well, we'll just do a best effort, but then the best effort missed a lot of QA and a lot of this performance optimization, which, to be perfectly honest, Evolving Web ended up doing mostly at its expense. But the client also increased the budget to, to capture some of it. I would say it's like one third, two thirds in terms of overrun hours. That, that said, we're particularly proud of this project and we think uh, we learned a lot. Certainly, mm -hmm. Jigger can, yeah, I can testify to that. Yeah. Uh, so, and, and Canada has nice R&D tax credits. Uh, so we could, all this Blackfire profiling stuff fits into that. So hopefully we'll get some of that money back in a year. By the way, every, every person who asks a question will be rewarded with a shot of this private import <laughs> Vibrova Polish vodka, which Peter Valadin asked us to smuggle in across the waterfront. <laughs> um, so, it, you said that you were, started with MS as access, and I was curious to how well that played with your code. Did you actually have an export, uh, or did you have to go into MS? access to, to work with it? Yeah, so, so that's, a, that's a great question. I, I only skim that. Uh, so there's an MS SQL database, which was kind of central server, and they had an MS access front end uh, that would connect to it. So it's kind of like MS access, but it was shared data between all the members of the, of the team. Uh, so we had to get our own copy of both, and we, uh, we were using access to audit the VB scripts to figure out what they were doing to run those scripts to see how they generate the, the HTML files. Uh, and then we had to make a decision. Do we write a Drupal migration plugin that connects to the SQL Server database directly? And we did, we actually prototyped that. Or do we uh, export using these CSVs and then like, just write the SQL Server queries that are gonna be run by the client on their server and dump and we get it with FTP? We decided the latter approach was more decoupled. It was actually technically more complicated because of that join that I had to describe, but, but we found that it, it decoupled the process and allowed us to communicate less and fail in more elegant ways. So we ended up doing that, kind of separating what we built for Drupal yeah. from anything that has to do with the structure of their database except those 30 SQL statements. So that worked out nicely. And as they're migrating to, to virtue sales now, mm -hmm. uh, they, they have a much easier time. We're like, hey, just make these 30 SQL statements still work, compare the generated CSV files before and after. And so we kind of dumped all the responsibility on them because their database architect knows SQL, knows CSV, and doesn't have to know anything about Drupal or our website. There's a question. I just want to buy it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you can't buy this in, in uh, the Northeast. So, uh, are there any, is there any code from the legacy uh, site still running, or is that all moved over to Drupal? 
We kept the WordPress blog. Uh, we didn't move that over, so because that was kind of a separate team, I guess, or because it was not a big priority. So the WordPress is in place. It would be pretty trivial to merge that in once once the time comes. Uh, but the rest, like I said, was VB scripts, reading from MS SQL, which is going away for in favor of this virtual sales Biblio tool. Uh, so uh, the only thing that the VB scripts are still running is for that Onyx feed. So um, I think that would have to be a separate engagement to, oh no, but the Virtue Sales Biblio will generate an Onyx feed. So they have a whole big, much, much better budgeted project to move to Virtue Sales Biblio and, and that publishing ERP tool will generate the Onyx feed. And, and so as far as I can tell, it'll be a clean break from the past. the static pages were moved over and then just... Um, I think both, uh, I think Luis is in a better... Over, they're still, they're in, um, they're in code that, so there's a, a, a just a plain body field, and then you know it's HTML code in a lot of those. It's still an everyday process um, cleaning that up. Okay. Thanks. Great. By the way, while while I'm here, we have Etienne uh, in the back. So say hi. He he took over as project manager for this thing in September. So uh, I forgot to acknowledge him, but he did a great job in that part. Uh, any any other questions, folks? What, what firm did you say you're from? Uh, Evolving Web, uh, the logo is right there. And uh, funny you should ask, so I have a, I have a sales slide just for, the, for this. We paid her 20 shots, I mean 20, 20 bucks, I don't know, uh, in, in shots. Uh, so we have uh, Evolving Web, uh, we do a lot of training and uh, we have an upcoming training in Princeton that we scheduled because we were at this camp and we are doing a, like a, a, a training yesterday. So we have a follow-up week-long training for module development, theming, uh, and site building. Uh, in, in this week in May, May 7th to 11th. And we have several online trainings scheduled as well. So if you guys want to more, learn more about our company or just learn more about these aspects of Drupal development and site building and decision making, these trainings can be a good asset. Check, it, check that out on training at Evolving Web. And I think that's how we initially got in touch with the press. So, um, Their and, training is wonderful. Yeah, and then my wife Suzanne is very, very good at this. And, uh, and I think she's a much, much better presenter than, than Jigger and I. She, I think. She, her talk at DrupalCon Baltimore was tied for the number one reviewed talk, so she's a pretty good presenter. So. You guys did great. Thanks. Thanks a lot, guys. Thank you. Thank you.